So tonight, we're going all the way to Japan and all the way back to 1969. The story takes place in a small fishing village called Sasebo City. On the Sunday evening of February 23rd, three unsavory looking men were witnessed by locals asking around town for the address of a Shoyama family. But it would be yet a fourth man that finally received the proper information needed to be standing at the front door of Mr. and Mrs. Shoyama. And I must tell you that all four men had no clue who the Shoyamas were, nor did the Shoyamas themselves know these men. But the man at their door would have a story for them that both shocked and angered them greatly. The man then pulls out an item from his pocket which immediately added more weight to his words. The Shoyamas took the item and a promise was made. What the couple didn't know was that their world had already been taken away from them. My name is Killian, and welcome to True Crime Stories. It was a quiet, relaxing Sunday for the Shoyama family earlier that morning. 14-year-old Jin Shoyama was working on a school project as his parents enjoyed their own activities. At around 2 p.m., Jin asked his parents if he could go into the city to meet his friends. His parents agreed that it was okay, so Jin, dressed in his school uniform on an off day, which wasn't uncommon in this area, placed a hat on his head, said goodbye to his parents, and left. The parents went back to enjoying their day. Until... At around 6 p.m. that evening, a loud knock at the door put an end to any type of harmony as the husband and wife cautiously looked to see who was banging on their door. They find a young man in his 20s looking rather disgruntled. This man went on to explain that he had been searching for their house for the better part of the afternoon and with some help from the locals, he finally found it. Having never seen this man in their lives, the Shuyamas were confused on why he was looking for them and why did he seem so upset. The young man then produces a hat in which the family name was written on. It was undeniably Jin's hat. The man said with anger, The owner of this hat stole my money and begins a story. So according to the man, he was walking down a road in the city when he noticed two boys struggling to get their bike out of a ditch. Without much thought, he took off his jacket, laid it on the ground, and proceeded to help the kids out. As he made an effort towards the bike, one of the two boys grabbed his jacket and took off. The man realized instantly what was happening, so he reached out for the second boy, who was still within arm's reach, but was only able to grab the hat in his back pocket. Unable to recover from a bad position, all he could do was watch both boys disappear with his stuff. He would then spend the next two and a half hours searching for the surname Shoyama that was written on the hat. But why the desperate search for something as replaceable as a jacket? Well, it was because, the young man said, he had 460,000 yen in his pocket, adjusted for inflation in USD today. That's roughly $12,000. The Shoyamas were completely appalled to hear this story. Not only did it sound a bit dramatic, it just didn't sound like something their son would do. The young man gave Jin's hat back to the couple and a promise was made that when Jin came home, they would punish him and make him give back the money. The man left and the Shoyamas waited for their boy to come home to explain himself but he would not come home that night. As nerve-wracking as a missing child is for parents, the Shiyamas were about to receive a letter the following day that had their parental instincts flashing red that there was something worse than just a runaway. They recognized the handwriting on that letter. It was from Jin. It read, Dispensing preliminaries, I'm sorry for worrying you. One of my bad friends made me steal money. There was more than 400,000 yen in there, but I only received a little. Please tell the school that I'll be absent for a while until I sort myself out. 
I'll return home soon and apologize. Please don't come looking for me. Jin. Everything about the letter seems to confirm the young man's story from the previous evening, but it also confirmed to the parents, who were extremely close to their son, that something was not adding up about this situation. The Shoyamas did not find relief in this letter. It only made things more unsettling for them, because this letter was a bit too formal, a bit too matter-of-fact, especially the beginning line of dispensing with preliminaries. The parents never knew their boy to use such phrases. He wasn't advanced in that manner, but he was a clever child. They noticed that he had spelled his name wrong, and they knew in their hearts that he did it on purpose to let them know something was wrong. They were convinced that he did not write this letter on his own free will and told the police all about it. Two days after Jin was first reported missing, the police organized a large-scale search stretching as wide as the surrounding mountains, but it came up empty. The young man, who by the way, never reported his money stolen, was quickly found and brought in for questioning. Given Japan has protected this man's identity, we'll now call him what the police dubbed him, Suspect A. He was a 24-year-old man who was currently on parole after being in prison for two years for crimes unmentioned. As detectives dug into his activities on the day of Jin's disappearance, many people did confirm his story that he was asking around for the Shoyama household. But a bit of strange information accompanied their recollections as well. That shortly before Suspect A was asking, three other men were asking about the Shoyamas as well. What a popular family they were that day. Was it a coincidence? Fuck no, but Suspect A stuck to his story. The authorities at this point were already leaning towards a kidnapping for ransom plot that involved all four men. They theorized that they possibly were connected from Suspect A's time in prison. Along with this new revelation, the physical attributes of Suspect A and Jin Shoyama himself would play a role in the story detectives were carving out. Jin even though he was just 14 years old, was already standing tall and strong at about 5'6", much taller than Suspect A, who was described as short and pudgy, leading detectives to believe that there was no way for Suspect A to overpower Jin without accomplices. Another bit of questionable information was when Suspect A was asked to give his encounter with Jin in detail. And when he was asked how tall he figured the boy was, Suspect A said that they were the same height, making detectives question if he had even met Jin at all. Just a pawn in a ransom plot, he was then asked why two young boys would even want to steal his jacket in the first place, leaving an entire bicycle behind. Not a good trade, right? Was the money just sticking out of his pockets? Suspect A's answer was less than convincing. He said, Yeah, you couldn't see it from the outside. Come to th think of it, that is strange. Where the bicycle scene supposedly happened was at about 3.30 p.m. in broad daylight, next to a busy road, where police were able to corroborate a portion of his story with witnesses. They could not find one soul that remembered the bike incident. And then there was the question about Suspect A even carrying around $12,000 in the first place. He was only out of prison for about four months and working at a cleaner's at the time. So how did he come upon so much money? His response was that he had the money before he was locked up and hid it under his family's house. But his own parents didn't have his back as they denied he buried anything under their house. So here's how detectives saw the situation. That suspect A never met Jin Shiyama at all. That he was just playing his role in the greater scheme of ransom for the three unknown men. The plan was to guilt the parents into paying off their son's debt, which backfired when the parents believed that their son's letter was coerced and went straight to the police, in which it could be surmised that Jin Shoyama was murdered and disposed of. Once the plan failed, 
because unfortunately, Jin would never return home again. His body was never found. Eventually, all leads would dry up. Suspect A, once released, left town immediately. Any information about the three men never materialized. The case went cold. The Shiyamas eventually moved away from Sasebo City as well, from the town that reminded them of their missing child. To this day, nobody has ever been charged with the disappearance of Jin Shoyama. So what do you think happened? Did the cops have the right man and simply botched the investigation? Or was Jin just too ashamed to ever come home again? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories just like this. My name is Killian. Let this story be a reminder to protect the ones you love and love the ones that protect you.